All right. Okay, so I want to share something with you this morning and um, try to make this as quick as possible. In Isaiah 9, verse 6, it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now I want to, I want you to remember that phrase right there, the Prince of Peace. Okay. Now we're going to fast forward to the New Testament, and uh, let's see if I can. If I can find a verse related to that, if that's possible. That's not that's not the one, fellas. Hold on. Uh, I think it's this right here. There it is. Okay, suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth, I tell you nay, but rather division okay so do you imagine Jesus is coming to bring peace on earth I remember as a child and tuning into these um, you know these Jimmy Swagger type of uh, television programs right and they would talk about a revival where you've got a you know you got to send me a bunch of money and then we'll get a bunch of people gathered up and we'll have a great big revival. You know, just send me a bunch of money and we'll get it figured out. Well, this idea of a revival, it's been around even today, I'm sure of it. I don't pay attention to those people, but I'm sure there's still people talking about a revival. The whole Mormon religion is essentially built on that idea. And so that's completely contrary to what the Bible says and completely contrary to what Jesus says here. So uh, why is Jesus called the Prince of Peace? And then at the same time, he says, think not that I've come to bring peace on earth. Right? And that goes back to the Matthew. So think not that I'm come to send peace on earth. I'm, I came not to send peace, but a sword, and that sword uh, represents division, right? So, what kind of how can Jesus be the Prince of Peace if he's not bringing peace on earth? Is this a contradiction? No, it's consistent, man. It's the absolute truth, and you know it's got to be truth. That this is the only possible way because this world is full of corruption. How are you going to fix it? How are you going to fix this wicked world? The only way to fix this wicked world is to cut out all the sin, all the wickedness, all the evil that's in this world. The only way to cut that out, the only way to get rid of it is to cut it out. And so that's what Jesus is going to do, right? That's why he ascended to heaven and he promised to return. And then when he returns, that's judgment day, right? That's the great day of the Lord. That's when the... Wheat is separated from the false wheat, right? And uh, that's when we are gathered together. That's when Israel, the nation of God, is gathered together. And we are lifted up in the air to be with the Lord. And all of our enemies will be down at our feet. And God will send fire down from heaven and destroy them all. And that will completely cut out all the evilness, all the wickedness, all the sin that's in the world. So that's, there's no greater peace than that, right? So that's the kind of peace that Jesus is bringing us. All right, so we put our faith and hope in him and his finished works and his return and um, his promise of everlasting life, right? So again, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you are sealed with the holy promise and Jesus says, no man shall pluck them out of my Father's hand. My Father is greater than all. Right? So, once you are saved, you are always saved. You have eternal life in you, just like it says in John chapter 3, 
verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall never perish, but have everlasting life. So you believe in Jesus Christ, you have everlasting life. It doesn't get any more peaceful than that. And again, if you could screw it up, I would. Believe me, I've screwed up everything I've ever done in my entire life. And if it was on me to stay saved, I would screw that up too. I guarantee it. But I can't screw it up because Jesus has already done the work for me. He's already uh, sealed me. He's our, I'm already saved. And so I already have the spirit of everlasting life in me, and that's never going to leave me. Never going to leave me nor forsake me. Okay. So, uh, again, there's no greater peace than that. That's the ultimate peace, right? And so the peace on earth is not going to happen until all the wickedness is cut out. So, again, Jesus is absolutely 100% the prince of peace. And the, he'll be the king of peace once when he comes back and he makes everything new, right? What's that, what's that verse in Revelation 21? Oh, I can't remember nothing. I can't even spell. All right, this will be my last point here, my last verse here. All right, so I think there's a word, a new heaven and a new earth. I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem. Right there it is. And he said, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. So glory to God. We're waiting for that, huh? That'll be exciting. All right.